Okay, and tax losses, you know, is a very similar scenario. So once the platform from once you, you've established kind of two things, once if you, once you establish the event-driven architecture, which is the first layer, and once the, these events are in place, you have to establish the complex event processing uh, platform uh, because you know the possibilities pretty much become endless. And again, aggregating the events and, and trying to act intelligently on those events is is a very important thing. And I think you know one of the promises of SOA. Is, is accomplished through complex event processing, right? The flexibility and the agility of the business is achieved really this way. Questions? Confused everybody? No. No. This is about us. This is a marketing slide. Uh, we're called open, uh, Freedom Open Source Solutions, uh, premier partner of Red Hat J Boss. And you know, really, our focus is working with JBoss Red Hat family of products. Uh, we have a lot of good engineers and architects that are actually committed to, you know, productionizing and really implementing systems that are scalable and, and fast, uh, which is important in you know working with professional open source because a lot of that, uh, you know, a lot of confidence from the clients comes from, you know, really having systems that run on professional open source and that are you know well supported and, and, and run properly so we we address a lot of these issues uh, our core practice areas is JBoss obviously Red Hat professional services practice area practical service oriented architecture and this is really um, the case study from that uh, practice technical architecture SWAT professional service consulting uh, continuous improvement and agile application development so these are all the things that we do as uh, as an organization Questions? So how did you like a CPO server or how did the CPO server put the event into the MTO? Yeah, so so essentially, yeah, you know, going back. So for every one of the, the existing legacy system, we had to implement a a technology adapter which actually knew how to interact with this particular legacy system. So instance, M MS SQL Server guy knew how to set up triggers and knew how to publish the triggers onto the messaging platform uh, in a you know, canonical model format. So it actually set in the same infrastructure as the SQL Server and had a shadow table that basically was triggered, uh, the data was inserted by a trigger that was set up on a SQL Server set of tables and actually took that data and published it out uh, to the JMS world. So every one of these systems had their own kinks, so their own API. For instance, the Siebel, Oracle Siebel product has its own API. So again, an adapter has to be created per system usually, uh, if it's a package system, or there can be a generic technology adapter, for instance, knows how to interact with an Oracle database or a batch system that can take file and break it up into events. Um, and that's why you're kind of segregating your architecture where these guys are taking care of the generation of events and the complex event processing platform takes care of, you know, in, a, in this, you know, takes care of worrying about aggregating and intelligence around these events. Yes? Sure. Yeah, so inverted fact database is, is actually a concept that, the, co the concept is, that it's a database turned upside down, essentially. It's not, it's not a polling type of interaction with the database where, let's say, in a traditional warehouse world, you would have the data in the warehouse and then you would issue continuous SQL statements um, around uh, you know, data and try to pull the data. The inverted database concept is actually more of you store your queries and as data arrives real time, these queries are executed and uh, basically, uh, you know, you, you, you pull the data and re as it happens. It's a push versus a pull. So the JBoss cache, and I remember I talked about the, the proper change listener. So the JBoss cache was wired to be the property change listener for JBoss rules. So as data arrived on the bus, you know, the JBoss cache became the inverted database. So essentially you would insert the data into the JBoss cache and via property listener, the JBoss rules will be automatically executed because it knows that the object or the, the you know, the, the set of objects are changed and the rules will be fired automatically. So that way, again, you're reactive, you're, not, you're, you're avoiding the, the polling of the data. Yeah, you say you have a canonical event format data. What kind of format data is it? Uh, it was an XML format. I, uh, we, we selected uh, OHS BOD's uh, XML format, so we went with an industry standard. It, wasn't, it was an Excel standard. That, uh, it wasn't an XML standard. XML. Yeah. 